All right. Good morning, church. Good morning, brother. Good morning. First of all, again, happy Mother's Day to each and every mother. Uh, uh, I think Brother Larry's had a good opening statement about mothers. And I've always said, if you ever question the wisdom of God, just look at a mother. That's right. But God truly knew what He was doing when He created mothers. Right. This morning I'd like to share a little short point uh, before we get started. And it's uh, called Her Hands. And it's by Maggie Pittman. It says, Her hands held me gently from the day I took my first step. Her hands helped to guide me as I took my first step. Her hands held me close when the tears would start to fall. Her hands were quick to show me that she would take care of it all. Her hands was there to brush my hair and to straighten a wayward bow. Her, hairs, her hands were often there to confront the hurts that didn't always show. Her hands helped hold the stars in place and encouraged me to reach. Her hands would clap and cheer and praise when I captured them at length. Her hands would also push me, though not down or in harm's way. Her hands would, would, would punctuate the word, just do what I say. Her hands sometimes had the discipline to help bend this young tree. Her hands would shape and mold me into all she knew that I could be. Her hands are now twisted with age and years of work. Her hands now need my gentle touch to rub away the hurt. Her hands are more beautiful than anything can be. Her hands are the reason I am me. So, so my mothers, thank you this morning for... Uh, uh, if you have a mother that's alive, like Brother Larry said, let her know how much you love her. Yes. And if not, uh, you have a mother in heaven, Lord, we we uh, we honor her this morning as well. Yes. And, and one quick thing, too, next year, what I want to do for Mother's Day, and, and mm -hmm. I know it's another year off, but I want to set up a table with, with a, uh, pictures of all the mothers that are in heaven so they can be here with us as, as we do our Mother's Day service. So but I thought about it, but it was too late. So we'll do that next year. So help me remember because I will forget. Okay? <laughs> okay, who is our newest mother here? Probably be mad at Maddie that she's not here. So, And I think she's probably the newest mother here. So all our mothers this morning, Susan and Terry and myself have a little something for you. Uh, we know it's not much, but it's just a little something to let you know that we appreciate the mothers uh, that are here. And uh, uh, that we just want to show our gratitude to the, to our mothers. So Terry and uh, pass those out for me. something to let y'all know that we love my, our mothers here and we do appreciate them and we know the hard work that, that mothers uh, endure so we do appreciate everything uh, that y'all do. Okay, this morning our lesson is going to come uh, from Exodus chapter 2. Now, uh, what I, those that will be following in the Bible, uh, Exodus chapter 2, put a bookmark because we're going to kind of go back and forth. We have other scriptures that we're going to look at, but we're going to kind of refer back to Exodus uh, chapter 2 uh, as examples in certain parts. So go ahead and bookmark that. And we're going to read uh, Exodus chapter 2, the first 10 verses. Exodus chapter 2, the first 10 verses. About this time, a man and woman from the tribe of Levi got married. The woman became pregnant and gave birth to a son. She saw that he was a special baby and kept him hidden for three months. But when she could no longer hide him, she got a basket made of papyrus weeds and waterproofed it with tar and pitch. She put the baby in the basket and laid him among the weeds along the bank of the Nile River. The baby's sister then stood at a distance watching to see what would happen to him. Soon Pharaoh's daughter came down to bathe in the river, and her attendants walked along the riverbank. 
When the princess saw the basket among the reeds, she sent her maid to get it for her. When the princess opened it, she saw the baby. The little boy was crying, and she felt sorry for him. This must be one of the Hebrew children, she said. Then the baby's sister approached the princess. Should I go find one of the Hebrew women to nurse the baby for you? She asked. Yes, do, the princess replied. So the girl went and called the baby's mother. Take this baby and nurse it for me, the princess told the baby's mother. I will pay you for your help. So the woman took her baby home and nursed him. Later when the baby was older, his mother brought him back to Pharaoh's daughter, who adopted him as her own. The princess named him Moses, for she explained, I lifted him out of the water. Now, Yoshebed was not uh, was the mother of three very well-known biblical people. Her firstborn was Miriam. Now, Miriam was a prophetess, as, as we read in Scripture. She was also a poet, and she also was a, a singer, a uh, elite singer in there in Israel. Her secondborn was Aaron. Now, Aaron was a high priest of Israel. Then her youngest, her thirdborn, as she's referring to here, is Moses, which is the deliverer of Israel. Now, uh, her name is not mentioned here, but we know who she is. And we know her name because in Numbers chapter 26, if y'all want to follow the Bible, refer to Numbers chapter 26 and verse 59. It, it tells us who she is and it tells us her children so we know uh, who she is. So we're not questioning anything. Uh, Genesis, uh, Numbers 26, verse 59. The name of Amram's wife was Yoshebel, a descendant of Levi, who was born to the Levites in Egypt. To Amram, she bore Aaron, Moses, and their sister Miriam. Now, the name Yoshebel uh, means uh, to honor or to glorify God. And she lived up to her name by the way she lived her life, and she also lived up to it by her faith that she distributed, or that she believed in God, that she actually exercised in God. Now, when a, mother of, uh, when a mother of faith shows this great example, it kind of permeates through everything, doesn't it? Yes. You know, when a mother has faith, yes. it really goes a long, long, long ways. You know, I know as dads, we're disciplinary. We, I mean, we have, our, we have our place. But it's something about the faith of a mother that just brings strength and glory throughout everything. And this is how Yoshevel honored the glory of God. And she shows us as a great example this morning to trust God with our children. Amen. She showed us that. She said such the greatest example. I know Lois and, and uh, Eunice show great examples of, uh, of things as well. But I think Moses' mother here showed us one of the great examples of how we can trust God with our children. That's not always an easy thing to do, is it? To, to turn loose of our children and, and to trust them with God. Uh, but Yoshebel trusted God with her son. And, and we too, we, we must learn from her to trust God with our children. So this morning, her story is important to us. I know as men, we'll read it and, and we'll hear it and we'll agree with it. But for mothers, it's real. For mothers, it means so much. So this morning, we're going to use her as an example. Now, the first thing I want us to look at, mothers must trust the Lord before she can trust her children to the Lord. Amen. So we have to ask ourselves this morning, you know, as parents I, I, and mothers and fathers, we have to ask ourselves, how much do we trust God? Yep. Because trust me, if we don't, <clears throat> that's going to show. And, and how can you turn your child over to God in faith if you don't trust yourself in faith to God? So that, that's a question that we need to look at this morning. Now, now we see that she did. That she set this example for us. Because look at Hebrews chapter 11. We don't have to guess this. We don't have to wonder about her faith. Scripture is going to tell us and elaborate to us on her faith. So let's look at, at Hebrews chapter 11. And we know what chapter Hebrew 11 is all about, right? Speaks of nothing but faith, pretty much, right? Right. So, look what it says in verse 23. Hebrews 11, verse 23. By faith. See, that's the key. That's like one of those underlined words that I always say. By faith, Moses' parents hid him for three months after he was born because they saw he was no ordinary child. <coughs> Excuse me. And they were not afraid of the king's etiquette. 
See, this mother trusted God more than she feared man. So many times we, we, we fear the, 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 the authority of man more than we do the authority of God. But she shows us a great example here this morning. It says, by faith, by faith, she hid him. She did what she did by faith. She risked so many things. She put so many things in jeopardy. But it bothered her not because her faith was the strongest of all. Now, before we can trust uh, God with our children, mothers today, we must have faith in God through Jesus Christ yourself. That's right. And, and we, that must be a strong, permeating faith that goes throughout the family. Because I'm going to tell you, mothers are the glue that holds the family together. Yes, it is. You know, I know fathers, like I said earlier, have their place. But mothers seem to have the glue. They just hold everything together. You know, I, I've heard so many testimonies through, throughout my outreach ministry, throughout that ministry, throughout all, all the years that, that I've been involved in ministry. And, and many testimonies and many life stories, it all came down to one thing, the faith of their mother or their grandmother. How many of them told us that, well, my grandmother took me to, to church. My grandmother showed me this. My mother was the one that had faith in the house. My mother was, I've heard it so many times. Because they are the glue that holds the faith together in a family so, so many times. We see that Yoshebed had this kind of faith in God. Exodus chapter 2, let's flip back. In verse 1 and 2. Now a man of the tribe of Levi married a Levite woman, and she became pregnant and gave birth to her son. When she saw that he was a fine child, she hid him for three days. Now, we have to remember the story of, of, of Moses, and we have to remember that actually Yoshebel was pregnant with Moses at a very difficult time. Because actually, uh, the Israelites was enslaved to Egypt at this time. They, they was all enslaved. So, uh, Pharaoh had issued an order that to the midwives, he told all the Israelite midwives, every male child that is born that you deliver, put him to death. No questions, no second guess. When a male child is born, as soon as you identify him as a male, you put him to death. Well, the midwives refused to do this. They refused to take these child's life. So uh, Pharaoh put another order in effect. He said, Okay, every male child that is born will be thrown in the Nile River to drink. So when Moses was born, the day that he was delivered, and his mother seen that he was a male child, right then, she trusted God with that child's life. From the moment that child was born, she trusted him to God. Now, as, as mothers, how many times or have we ever Soon as our child was born, we said, God is yours. God, you see to his safety. Because I've heard it been said, mothers start saying goodbye to their child the instant they're born. Because they always having to let them go. I remember one, when, when the neighborhood that we lived in when Terry was first born, the neighborhood we lived in there, it was quite a few families in that neighborhood that had children the same age. And I remember the first morning of kindergarten, it was mothers and the kids standing all along the driveways, all through there. And I remember one thing that stuck out as I was driving, leaving, going to work. I was like looking at all the mothers standing there with their children. So when I got on the Gloria Switch Road, I got in behind the bus. And I was like, oh, it will be late for work. So I got in behind the bus. And, and as I was behind this bus, it was a mother and her little girl. And the little girl, you could tell she was probably in kindergarten. It was like her first, you could just tell. So when the child got on the bus, and the bus takes off, well, I take off behind the bus, and I happen to look in my rear view mirror, and the mother, she's still standing there. And I'm like, why is she still standing? And she's watching the whole time until that bus leaves. When the bus gets out of sight, then she, she goes back in the house. I can see it in my rear view mirror. So a mother had to start saying goodbye. It's not that it's goodbye, but they have to start letting go. Letting go. And I remember as I got older, uh, as I started getting older, uh, and, and I started uh, uh, started working, and uh, my, my 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 dad, his first thing was let the boy go, let him go. And my mom said, "Well, what if something happens?" And and you know that's very dangerous. And dad, dad said, "I'm sure something's going to happen, but it's hard for mothers to let that go, isn't it? But we have to start trusting God with our children. If we trust God with ourselves, 
then it comes natural. It will be a natural occurrence. The day when the delivery came, she trusted God to see his protection. She did her part. She trusted God that would do his part. The second thing I want us to look at, mothers, let your children know how special they are to God. I know Moses had a special purpose. I know that. But all of our children have a special purpose to God. Amen. If it's nothing, and, and I think one of the greatest purposes our children have is to worship God. Yes. So all of our children have a special purpose. Look at Psalms 139. Psalms 139, uh, verses 13 through 16. Psalms 139, verses 13 through 16. For you created my innermost being. You knitted me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearly and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place. When I was woven together in the depths of the earth, your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in the book before one of them came to be. Now, like I said, I know that Moses was born to be a special child. But God has a special purpose for each one of your children. God has a special purpose for your child to grow and become a part of the kingdom of God. God you, your child was created in, 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 uh, uh, before he was ever, you ever realized that he was known to be created in your room. God has a special purpose in place for each one of your child. If don't y'all believe, just ask Jesus. Look at Jesus with the little children. You ever notice how a child seems to, to gravitate towards someone that has a good spirit about them. You know, you're going to see little kids, someone they don't even know, just come up to them because they sense that peace and that love in them. And when they don't, they shy away from them. When, when they sense that, that hostility or whatever. And, and in this case, all of the children just ran to Jesus. They ran to him. And I could just see them playing on him and running and, and climbing <coughs> on his lap and just hugging on him and doing all these different things that they did. And the disciples were like, get away. He's got stuff to do. Leave him be. And Jesus said, stop it. Let those children be, because they belong to who? That's right. The kingdom of heaven belongs to such things as these children. They're special to him. Let them know that. Mm -hmm. Let your child know how special he is to Jesus. Let him know that. The third thing, mother, trust the, trust the Lord with your children. How can, how, can, how can you trust God with your children? First, trust the Lord yourself. Secondly, we trust the, the uh, uh, children to God. That's what Yoshebel did. Look at verse, let's look back at Exodus 2. Flip back to Exodus 2 real quick. Look at verse 3 and 4. But when she could no longer hide him, she had come to that point to where she had to what? Let go. That's right, let go. She, she, she had him, but as there comes that certain point where you have to let him go. But when she could no longer hide him, she got a basket made of papyrus weeds, reeds, and waterproofed it with tar and pitch. She put the baby in the basket and laid it among the reeds along the bank of the Nile River. The baby sister then stood at a distance watching to see what would happen to him. See, when she could hide him no longer, see, she showed faith by giving her child over to the Lord's protection. She put it in a basket by the Nile River. See, there comes that time when we have to let it go. Well, you have to trust God with your children. Imagine what she went through, letting her child go, not knowing what would happen. Uh, Yoshi Bell knew that, that, that she did all she could do. Now God would do what he had to do with that child. And, and, and it's such a beautiful thing. It's not a bad, it's a beautiful thing when we know that our children are in the hands of God. Amen. That's a beautiful thing. No matter Amen. whether it's life or death, our hands are in the child in the hands of God. That's right. You know, and, and I, I've made a statement before among a group of, of, of people I was speaking to, that uh, uh, all of us here, and this was a group of, of students, all of us here are prepared in some way to bury our parents. But for some of us, our parents will bury us. That's right. But long as our children are in the hands of God, we're able to see ourselves through these difficult, right. hard-pressed things. No matter what may be going on, no matter what may be happening, we know that our, hand, our ch children are in the hands of God. Letting your child go is never easy. It doesn't happen just once. It happens over and over again. It's been said that mothers begin to say goodbye to their child from the moment that they are born. We start to give our children to the Lord the moment they are born. Samuel, the prophet's 
his mother Hannah, she made that vow. And she set us a great example. Look, look at 1 Samuel 1, verse 11. 1 Samuel 1, verse 11. And this is a statement that she made. She said, I will give him to the Lord for all the days of his life. Not when he gets 10, not when he gets 12, not when he graduates high school. <coughs> all the days of his life, I will give him to the Lord. That's right. So as soon as our children are born, we should dedicate them to the Lord. She, she made that vow even before her son was born. They, they are all their gods anyway. You know, they, they belong to him. We, we just need to give them to him in faith. And that's something that we need to do over and over again. Once you've given your child to the Lord, you need to trust God with his sovereign care. Look back at Exodus 2. And we'll look at verse 5 through 9. Soon Pharaoh's daughter came to bathe in the river, and her attendants walked along the riverbank. When the princess saw the basket among the reeds, she sent her maid to get it for her. When the princess opened it, she saw the baby. The little boy was crying, and she felt sorry for him. This must be one of the Hebrew children, she said. Then the baby's sister approached the princess. Should I go and find the Hebrew woman to nurse the baby for you? She asked. Yes, do, the princess replied. So the girl went and called the baby's mother to take this baby and nurture him for me. The princess told the baby's mother, I will pay you for your help. So the woman took the baby home and nursed him. And that didn't even go, but God always had that control, didn't he? Yes. He'd always see to the destiny of that child. And that destiny was to come and be back with the mother until the appointed time. That's right. And then at that appointed time, when she had to let him go, she gave him back over. But she knew no matter what she gave, who she gave, how she gave, that God had control of who he would go and what he would do. Amen. Because she dedicated him to the Lord. The fourth thing, fourth and final thing, and then we'll close. Mothers, wait, raise your children to serve the Lord. Yes, Lord. Look at Proverbs 22, 6. Start, off, uh, start children off in the way they should go, and even when they are old, they will not turn away from it. Amen. See, first of all, we need to teach our children God's Word. We need to teach our children to, to, to read and obey God's Word. We need to teach them about God and Jesus in the Bible. We need to teach them Bible stories. We need to teach them about God's love and promises. We need to teach them about sin and how there is forgiveness. We need to teach them about the cross and the salvation. But first of all, and most importantly, teach them God's Word. You know, I used to I, I, and, and Brother Ricky remembers we had a, a lot of large Sunday school groups. Yeah. And, and I had a, I had several mothers that would approach me. I guess I'm very approachable, I guess. I don't know. But they would always approach me and they would say, I got a problem with our Sunday school teachers. And I would say, why? Well, I don't think they're teaching them everything. I said, what do you mean? Well, they're just teaching them certain things. I said, well, what are you teaching them at home? <laughs> right. It's not your Sunday school teacher's job to raise your child spiritually. That's right. It is your job to raise your child spiritually. All a Sunday school teacher does is just hone right. and enhance what you've taught them at home. That's right. I said, oh, are they teaching you? Obviously, what you teach them at home? Well, maybe you ought to start teaching them at home. And then let the Sunday school teachers kind of enhance what you've been teaching them at home. So we need to raise our children in, in the way of the Lord. Secondly, bring them to church. So right. Hebrews 10, 25. Let us not give up on meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but let us encourage one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. In church, your child learns to love God and learn God's people. Okay? Right. By bringing them to church as a family, your child learns to worship. They learn the importance of the church so that they will make it part of their own life when they grow older. Amen. It's a very important part. I remember all my church Sunday school teachers. I remember all my church days. I remember when I, 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 I rebellious stages, I guess you could say, the rebellious ages when you walk away. But I knew where to go when I needed it. When I was hurting and when I knew that something was missing, I knew where to go. Right. And I knew where to get it. And I, I feel sorry for those that don't. Third thing, the third and final thing, then thirdly, pray with them and pray for them. That's right. Prayer is essential for your child. You can't parent a child forever. We can only parent them for so long. 
And then after a while, they, they, they go their own way. Right. But you can provide them with a strong foundation. You're, uh, you're, you're, when you raise your child in the Lord, then when you let them go, you know that they will always trust the Lord. And Lord's care will always be over them. Amen. You know, mothers do such a great job of that. I should have saved this for the fathers because we're the ones that I think like in this area. Mothers are strong in this area. This is just an encouragement to mothers that we need to trust God with our families and with our children. I, I, I've seen so many times that, uh, when, you know, it's sad when you have a ministry that is strictly for women that are married, but their husband don't come to church. We had one, remember? And, and it's sad when that is probably one of your biggest Sundays. And, and it's, it's a problem. Yeah, it's a problem. So we, we need to be together on this uh, fathers and, and mothers and make sure that our children are raised in, in the house of the Lord. Amen. Let them to teach them to love God and to love God's people. Teach them to have forgiveness. Yeah. You know, I, and, and as, as parents, I know here, I'm probably preaching, preaching to the choir this morning, but mothers, these qualities that she had, each and every one of you had. That's right. You have them. Yes. I know you exercise them to the fullest. So praise God for that. Amen. So thank God for you for that. So this morning, if we have a need, any need at all, we can come. Song of invitation will play, and you can make your feelings known as we stand there and sing. <laughs>